Hi, welcome back to Cubs and Culture, talking about managing and Joe Madden. Okay, so, like I said, I only think uh, 25% of, their jo- of his job is dealing with um, in-game stuff. The, the vast bulk of it um, is dealing with um, clubhouse issues and keeping players happy. Um, and focus because it's 162 games under over 183 days. You're dealing with um, a hell of a lot of sort of interpersonal um, uh, uh, challenges because you have <laughs> you're dealing with um, a spectrum of men in terms of ages and in terms of like wealth and there's a lot of money involved. Um, uh, in baseball, um, and with players. And so, like, so just to use a couple of examples of, like, interpersonal issues that came up over the season, which, um, uh, I think Joe Madden handled very, very well because this is really his strength as a manager. So, like, last season, I think in June, maybe it was July, um, it's currently under investigation. It's, we're not entirely sure because of the way in which the report came out. But anyway, there was a third party, accusation against um as in Russell of domestic violence. Um I don't want to like it doesn't like it uh, <laughs> um uh how they handle that in terms of um the clubhouse and then also as sort of like fans in the press always wants to dig up into the dirt and so like Madden and probably with Epstein made the decision that on the accusation when it first broke to just simply not have As and Russell play that night and take a little bit of a hit, um, defensive, um, hit, um, and for that game defensively or whatever. And it, like, I think that was the right decision. Um, and so it's those sort of decisions that he has to deal with. And then also, um, uh, the other sort of thing is players, you, you, you get 25 guys. A lot of, uh, for the Cubs, ages are like 22, 23, to all the way up to John Lackey, who's like 38, 39. Um, and, you know, e- issues of ego and of aggression. Like, I, like, I feel like, <laughs> like, Madden's, a, a manager's ability to prevent players from ki- um, killing each other <laughs> is probably far more important than how they handle, um, re- um, uh, uh, pitching, uh, in-game pitching stuff. Um. So another sort of really good example of this is uh, Miguel Montero, uh, Miggy. Um, he's not. He's very. Uh, he's towards the end of his career. I think he has a minor league deal deal now. In any case, um, last year with um, there's this issue with Arietta um, and him when they ca- uh, uh, Miggy's a better pitch framer than. Um, uh, uh, Contreras and with Arietta, his pitches sort of uh, don't move very well. Like they move too much, and so you sort of need a better pitch framer. He's very hard to catch in that way. Um, um, so you should put Miggy in for that. But the thing is, Arietta is very slow to the plate, and he's easy to run on because of that reason. And Miggy has a very bad defensive caught, um, stealing number. Um, so you should use Contreras. <laughs> so there's like, who do you use? Um, in any case, uh, Miguel Montero and Arietta against the Nationals one day. Um, Trey Turner, who's their leadoff hitter, um, um, really likes to run. And uh, it wasn't just him, but um, by far and large, um, uh, uh, Trey Turner... Um, I think Trey Turner ended up being five and someone else stole two. In any case, there were seven stolen bases in that game, which is not, um, which is way too much for a single game. <laughs> um, like, if we were in a different era, um, I'm pretty sure Trey Turner would have pulled a, um, uh, um, Ty Cobb and stole home. Um, but in any case, um, uh, Miguel Montero afterwards, um, kind of went into this mini rant about how it sucks, how the still uncaught stealing, um, goes on to his statistics and not Arietta's because Arietta was supposed to the play. And like, this is an art, not a science. If going back to the actual comments, there's nothing about them which absolutely would have made the, um, 
decision that you should have um, DFA um, designated for assignment, i.e. cut uh, Miggy over them. And if it was in 2016, I think um, uh, he probably wouldn't say, but um, Epstein and uh, Madden had a very brief 10-minute conversation and then um, Epstein... Uh, DFA'd him because of it wasn't going well during that national series because it was in the first half. Oh, so it must have been in May. Um, um, et cetera. And so it's that sort of handling of players um, that are, that's important. And so like that sort of um, uh, 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 thing Joe Madden's really, really good at, or the other sort of thing that he's good at. Um, like I imagine, on one hand, it would be really frustrating to play for him because he seems to, um, kind of um, like there. Uh, like it seems like madness, but it's absolutely a method to like during the World Series. Baez was in a little bit of a funk, um, which I think was just natural regression towards the mean, um, because he was basically a little bit too soon on um fastballs, um. Um, etc. So on the day of Game Seven, um, and this is in um, Cubs Way by Tom Verucci, uh, I think is how you say it. Um, Madden calls in Baez, and he says, "Hey, you know, this is more for next year. It has nothing to do with the game tonight. But can you just wait a little bit and try to go the other way?" Um, and he also told Russell sort of the same thing because he was having a, a similar issue, and I don't imagine how that conversation went but the fact of the matter is Javier Baez knocked Kluber out with that home run the other way um, and they're like there's a way of which of talking about things like that which can sh- um, shut people down um, 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 versus um, getting them in a good place and so Matt like so Madden this is what Madden's really good at um, and it's an art, not a science. And it, um, um, handling um, uh, handling players' egos, keeping them happy, keeping them um, focused, making sure they don't push themselves too hard. Um, so the issue of rest, one of the things uh, we don't talk about enough in terms of management is sort of like rest schedules. Um, and sort of on the mental um, and how to keep players focused mentally and keeping the game light and a game. And so like, that's one of the things I think Madden's really good at. And now I said in my previous section, I thought only someone that was Madden ass could break the, um, curse, uh, for the Cubs because, you know, 108 years, 71 years for the pennant, etc. Um, <coughs> the thing about the sort of Cubs history, because of the vulgarities of the postseason, we know in terms of like, ELO, which is an overall measurement for um, regular season, strength of teams, etc., um, that they should they have three World Series championships, 90, uh, 07, 2, 1907, 1908, and 2016. Um, they should have four other, uh, three, uh, 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 four others, though. Um, 2003, probably the most other famous um, um, example. And then there's also 84. Four against the Padres when they went up two games and then got swept. Um, uh, uh, I just made myself sad. Anyway, so it, so because of that, no, the thing is, I don't like. I don't like the curse of the Billy Goat is not a thing. Um, um, they, it wasn't that the Cubs were cursed. What I think it was, and I think this even happened a little bit in 2016, is if you have it in your head that uh, you're cursed and you're going to end up being cursed. Like, it's not like it's a supernatural thing or it's not just bad luck. It's it's the thought we, we're doomed, so you're doomed. So, like, um, going back to 2003 with, um, oh, what's that guy's name? Bartman. When Bartman kind of had that fear interference, I... Bartman himself is blameless in this. He did what everyone else would have done in that situation. But in any case, the Cubs then proceeded to implode um, in both the eighth inning of um, Game 6 and then Game 7 also. Um, That, I I think, has everything to do with the mental aspect of we're we're, we're Cubs, we always lose, therefore we always lose. And I really think, and again, I think you saw this 
a little bit in the World Series because the Cubs lost the first game in games um, three and four. Um, and three and four were at Wigley, so there was a tremendous amount of pressure on um, the players. Um, and in some ways, it was very fortunate that we didn't have home field advantage because I thought the, the Wigley and the Cubs fans being predominantly in front in Wigley Field, it was too much pressure. Um, to finally get the thing done. And it really is, um, this is old f- saying in, um, on baseball that you can't play the game with your teeth clenched. Um, and Madden, his true strength as a manager is he gets players to unclench their teeth. Um, he, and he did it. And so I think only someone with, uh, not, if not Madden per se, someone with Madden's skill set around handling players' egos and sort of um, soft skills and realizing that, like, again, this is somewhat hippie-ish, that visual, mental, um, visu- um, mental visualization, mental skills, handling everything is absolutely um, uh, absolutely important um, for the um, sport. And so, like, one of the things that I really like about Joe Madden is I have never... Not never. I I can only think of one game or maybe what we, in three years, I can only think of two times he's had a negative comment about the team. And I've never heard a negative comment about um, um, the uh, and individual players. And so and it, really when it was about the team, it was always – Come on, guys, stop striking out. That was basically what the comment was. And so, like, that sort of positivity is, like, really refreshing in today's world. Okay, I'm just rambling at this point. I'll see you in a bit.